How's it going, everybody? It's your boy, the Sharpshooter Pistol here. So, as you already know, I'm a pretty big fan of Ultra Kill. It's probably one of my uh, favorite games that I currently own at the moment. And obviously, with a uh, slight obsession with Ultra Kill comes, of course, watching a lot of Ultra Kill-related content, and especially watching individuals, I suppose, you know, pretty much piece together the lore and go over certain things as new information ends up coming to light. However, there's one particular thing in Ultra Kill, well, it's actually a series of things in Ultra Kill, that, oddly enough, I haven't seen anyone actually make any videos about. Literally no one reading through these, trying to interpret them, and it's very confusing as to why no one has made a video talking about these, especially considering that, well, they pretty much give insight as to pretty much why a lot of, you know, what happened in Ultra Kill pretty much ended up starting off. To kind of give a little bit of context, within Ultra Kill's universe, a lot of the events that happen within Ultra Kill, or at least the events that happen leading up to the start of the actual game itself, pretty much all kind of started upon the disappearance of God himself. And honestly, the testaments that exist within Ultra Kill's secret missions well, they offer some insight as to the possible motivations for why God just decided to get up and never return, leaving the entire universe, pretty much, to just kind of fend for itself until it just kind of ultimately collapses, which is likely what's going to happen at the end of the game. So I felt like I would read through these testaments, at least the uh, four testaments that currently exist at the moment, and just kind of go over them and try to give my own interpretation of them. Because, well, for some reason no one else has actually bothered to do this yet. So anyways, without further ado, let us sit back, relax, grab some popcorn, and let us get started with Testament 1 found at the end of 0-S. Mankind is a failure. Free will is a flaw. Let the evil of their own lips consume them. Then I shall begin again with my word as law. So obviously, with this being the first testament, there really isn't that much in terms of information that's really given. But what it seems to be stating is pretty straightforward. The idea of free will being given to mankind was pretty much something that wasn't really, I'm, I'm assuming, originally intended. Humanity gaining free will ended up becoming somewhat of a glitch, if you will, or a flaw, as it's stated right here, and therefore that's probably what led to the conclusion within the first line of this poem here, stating that mankind is a failure. So of course, with, you know, mankind developing free will, they would ultimately end up just kind of doing their own thing, probably ignoring the existence of God himself, and just kind of like going off and doing their own thing, and probably causing a lot of things that, well, you know, the big man in the sky probably didn't want to actually occur in the first place, which is something that is repeatedly stated within the following testaments that we're going to be going over. But of course, the interesting part is, of course, the second half of this testament, which is, let the evil of their own lips consume them, then I shall begin again with my word as law. Now, these two lines are very interesting, because honestly, you could take this one in a multitude of different ways. The way I kind of interpret it is like, this is like God kind of, you know, coming to the conclusion that there's really no saving humanity at this point. Like, he is like, this is probably like a few thousand years down the line after he's created the universe and created mankind. Mankind developed free will and started causing madness, and he just comes to the conclusion that, well, he can't really do anything to fix it. He's probably tried multiple times beforehand and came to this conclusion himself after trying so many fucking times beforehand. And then, of course, you know, he pretty much just comes to the conclusion, you know what? I might as well just kind of try to restart humanity, but I'm not going to do it myself. I'm just going to let them do their own thing and cause their own destruction, and then restart everything, this time uh, with whatever measures I need to do in order to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Next up is Testament 2, found at the end of 1-S. Failure after failure after failure after failure 
after failure, the results refuse to alter. Again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, again, my faith begins to falter again. This pretty much kind of ties in with something that I only briefly mentioned within the First Testament, which was, of course, you know, the idea of this universe's version of God kind of trying to, I guess, experiment with possible ways to try and kind of correct what has already happened with humanity. And, you know, even after he came to the conclusion that mankind was a failure, assuming that this testament was, I guess, supposedly penned or however these are recorded, um, uh, after the first testament, uh, was recorded, um, you know, God is still at least attempting, but every single time that he tries to, I guess, correct what is wrong with humanity, or even the universe at large, it just results in constant failures, and every single time the results just kind of keep on going the same direction that they were going before. And of course, every single time that he tries and continues to fail at every single experiment and attempt to try and correct what is wrong with the universe, he begins to pretty much lose faith in himself, which is kind of ironic considering, well, you know, I mean, it, this is supposedly, at least, you know, it's implied that this is God himself basically, you know, quite literally stating that even his own faith in himself is like kind of taking a collision course with the ground at this point, with every single time he fails to correct things. So the next uh, testament is within 4-S. Uncountable cycles of creation wasted. Uncountable formulas for a mind without free will wasted. Damned is man for failing to follow my rule, my word, my law. Damned to an eternity of torture and suffering, the wailing and the gnashing of teeth. I have created hell. And now I can no longer unmake it. Testament 3 is probably one of the more interesting ones because, honestly, it's kind of one of the more confusing ones in my personal opinion. So of course, it continues on with the whole idea of God continuously trying to experiment with any possible methods that he can in order to try and correct, you know, what has ultimately happened with mankind or the universe or whatever. And every single time that he has tried to come up with some sort of way for, you know, humanity to develop properly, even without free will, it ultimately ends up failing in some way, shape, or form. So, of course, he ultimately just comes to the conclusion that mankind is just screwed from the start. The moment that they develop free will, they are basically screwed and there is really no saving them. And the interesting part honestly comes from the last two lines, which is, I have created hell, and now I can no longer unmake it. Which is interesting for a couple of reasons, because much like with the First Testament, this one can be interpreted in a few different ways. Either A, you can interpret this in a way of God himself basically stating that this is the point in time at which he literally creates hell as a last-ditch effort to try and correct humanity in order to, I guess, scare humanity into finally listening to him, but then, well, ultimately, even that last-ditch effort ultimately fails, and now that it's- now that hell has basically been created, there's really no going back, and all he can really do is just sit back and watch as everything just goes, like, in the complete opposite direction. Or you can interpret it as, well, I guess more of a figurative way. Perhaps hell was already created beforehand, before this uh, testament was even recorded, and therefore it's more or less just God realizing that, well, the entirety of mankind on Earth and whatever else is going on within the universe at large um, has basically almost become an equivalent of hell um, in some way because of everything going wrong. Personally, I think it's probably more of a combination of the two. Perhaps this is God himself after he had already created Hell, and the moment that he had created it, he ultimately just realized that, well, the punishment that he created as a last-ditch effort ultimately is just 
an eternal version of the chaos that had already ensued on the surface. And now that it's been made, there's no going back and there's not much that you can do about it. And this is further, I guess, you know, solidified and confirmed within the next and currently last testament, which is Testament 4, which is found at the end of 5-S. Father, why eternal torment? Is it not cruel? Is torture unending truly a fate fit for a fool? Father, an angel so bright and beautiful asked me this, is it not? And I could find no answer. Is torture unending? For I could never face the guilt of what I'd done. Fool, my regret, a gnawing cancer. In my hour of weakness, terror possessed me then, and I cast Lucifer too into the infernal den. Once I realized what I had just done, I could only weep as I sank slowly into the depths of despair. Deep. Oh, so deep. So like I mentioned before, this is further confirmation that the Last Testament was likely more of a literal, like, you know, God actually creating hell as a last-ditch effort, and ultimately probably almost immediately realizing that it's ultimately just not going to work anyways, considering everything else that he had already attempted. And now that hell has already been created, there's really no going back. And considering the information that was given to us upon the uh, conclusion of the ARG when P-2 was released, somehow God had created hell, and hell either started off as a living thing, or B, it somehow became a living thing as more and more souls were just thrown into it. it I have no idea which one it could possibly be. I'm just going to safely assume that it started off as a living thing, just for the sake of things making sense. But here we actually have a confirmation that Lucifer is also a uh, character that exists within the Ultra Kill universe. Who knows if we're actually even going to encounter Lucifer in any way, shape, or form within Ultra Kill. Who knows? Maybe it'll be like some sort of mini-boss or something like that that shows up in one of the treachery levels. Who really knows? No one really knows what's going to happen. All we know is that Lucifer is pretty much, well, actually named here, and it's confirmation that he exists. And what's interesting here is that, well, within the biblical canon, at least within our own universe, the reason why Lucifer was kind of cast into hell was because he just decided to rebel against God, like in some way, possibly like rallying angels or something like that to, I guess, try to perform his own Sisyphean insurrection. However, within this universe, it's very different. It's basically just God already being, like, you know, weighed down by the guilt of everything else that was already going on within, you know, the world and the universe and whatnot, everything that he had fucked up on. And then suddenly, one of his, like, brightest angels comes to him, notices that hell was created, and just kind of goes like, Why did you make this? Or, like, did, like, there's kind of no purpose. Like, the people that are just getting sent down there were just kind of stupid. Like, is this, is this really justified? And obviously, since God kind of made hell this just like a weird last-ditch effort, he doesn't really have an answer for that one. He can't really justify it. And of course, he just kind of, instead of like giving a straight answer or just simply stating, I don't know what I was thinking, he just kind of grabs Lucifer and just yeets him down into hell, possibly all the way down into the ninth layer. And then, well... The moment that he does that, and the moment that he re recollected all of his thoughts, he basically just kind of realizes, Oh, shit. Well, that's not gonna look good on me. Well, uh, now the universe is screwed. Now everything is screwed. What, it, what was I thinking when I did this? I can't undo this now. What do I do from here? And obviously, within whatever the next two testaments, or one testament, I have no idea what the secret levels are going to be like within uh, violence and fraud, but... You know, whatever the next testaments are, they will definitely shine a lot more light as to the reasoning as to why God just decided to up and leave the universe uh, within the Ultra Kill universe. And yeah, uh, there it is. Those are the four testaments that currently exist within Ultra Kill. Obviously, there's a few other interesting terminals like at the end of the Prime Sanctums, but those aren't testaments. They're just kind of like weird, I guess, scientific logs or something along those lines. 
I am not really sure I could read through those, but people have already read those to death. And I mainly made this video uh, out of, like, a sake of necessity, because literally no one has ever made a video about the Testaments. And these are probably one of the most, like, important things to the overall Ultra Kill lore in terms of why, you know, God just decided to leave. Like, that is a big thing that likely caused this snowball effect of everything happening leading up to the game, and no one talks about the Testaments. They only just kind of, like, bring them up as a passing mention, but they never really dig too deep into them or find out the reasoning. And now, well, I feel like I'm the first one to really do so. I have no idea if my interpretations are entirely correct here. I could be very wrong, and those could be, in fact, corrected within you know, the next few layers that are going to be added in with secret levels and whatever those testaments are going to contain. But as of right now, this is pretty much everything. And yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any uh, different interpretations, I would actually really enjoy to hear those because, again, no one talks about these. These are very fucking important, at least in my opinion, and no one talks about them. So here I am now, finally creating a video for people to watch that probably only like two people will come across. But nonetheless, if you guys enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like, that's very well appreciated. Leave a comment down below what you thought about the video, what you want me to talk about next, and also subscribe to the channel if you're new and you want to see more content such as this. Also go ahead and follow me on Twitter, that's very well appreciated. And uh, yeah, anyways guys, this has been Sanity, have yourselves a nice day.